Hello everyone. Today I am doing a video for you on chakras. Now not everyone knows what chakras are, but they are basically energy centers that are located throughout our body. I'm going to focus today on the seven major ones. There are other ones and I will get into those at another time perhaps. But today we're going to talk about the seven main chakras, what they are, and what kind of um, unbalances can come with them. You'll understand that better if you don't know what chakras are in a little bit. So basically the chakras are, like I said, centers of energy through which all the energy in your body passes. Um, and if there's a blockage of sorts, then um, things like... Um, emotional, spiritual, mental, physical um, unbalances or um, illnesses can occur. So you want to keep an eye on your chakra. Chakra is actually a Sanskrit word meaning wheel. So they're often seen as little wheels. Now I'm going to give you a little picture here just to show you kind of what the chakras look like and where they're located. So here is sort of a picture. They start at the crown. Well, they actually start at the root here at the red chakra, and they work all the way up. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to talk about each one of these, what they are, what they do, how they contribute to your well-being, and what happens when they don't um, flow properly. So like I said, a lot of them are sort of talked about as wheels because in Sanskrit that they actually mean wheels. So they need to be spinning and you'll often hear the term open. You want your chakras to be um, well balanced. You want them to be open at certain points, but you don't want them to, you don't want to walk out in the world with open chakras because that's when you can attract certain things and they can get blocked. But another analogy that I really liked that I saw a video on was you also have to think of this as a river through your whole body. And it's a, it's a river that flows and creates energy and is, you know, water is always good for us, right? So if one of the chakras, let's say it starts flowing up here at the crown chakra and it's flowing and say you're this yellow chakra, you'll learn what that's called in a minute this yellow chakra is blocked, okay? So the water's flowing this way and the water tends to flow up and down with your chakras, right? The, or the energy flows up and down. So if you've got a blockage in your yellow chakra, it's kind of like a bunch of beavers have come and built a dam. So the water gets stuck here and the energy gets stuck coming back up. And that's where you kind of get some blockages happening. It can happen with one chakra, it can happen with two, it can happen with five. But regardless of how many chakras it's happening to, even if it's happening to like that one yellow chakra, like I said, it starts to affect the other chakras in your body. Um, so um, it, 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 it contributes to your body in a neurological and a physiological way. Um, there, like I said, there's seven main chakras. Starts with the root one, which is going, which we're going to talk about, and it goes all the way up to your crown chakra. It's called. So there are different chakras. Like I said, there's seven major ones in the body. We'll talk on the other ones at a later date. I do talk about the other ones um, in my training because I do have um, certified chakra healing that happens, uh, a course that I do. Um, I also talk about the chakras when I do crystal certified healers, when I'm training certified angelic healers, chakras all come into that um, because there's different angels for different chakras and whatnot. So when we're talking about chakras, there's the higher and the lower chakras. Now that doesn't mean there's any more importance um, to the higher or the lower, but generally speaking, um, the first three are the lower chakras. And then there's a little gateway here, and we're gonna get into that more. And then your next four are considered the higher chakras. 
So just to get that image in your mind, okay? And then there's 3D chakras, which are all located in your body. And then there's 5D chakras, which are some of the extra chakras. So like I said, we're gonna talk about the main seven ones. There are chakra points in your palms, in your feet, um, in other places uh, along your body, like the backs of your knees and that sort of thing. So what, why do you care about these chakras, you know, as far as energy goes and whether there's blockages and things like that? Because a lot of people are walking around with blockages and not even knowing it and wondering why life isn't going well. A lot of people want to know more about chakras and kind of sort of know what they are, but don't really know what they are. So I just wanted to bring some clarity to what these chakras are. Um, we're not going to talk about the healing today. We're going to talk more about the blockages because you're, you're probably going to recognize what some of these blockages are. It's like, oh, that's happening to me. Maybe this chakra is blocked. First, I'm going to talk about what each chakra is, and then I'm going to talk about some of the blockages, and then I'm going to do another video because it's a very big topic we, we've come across here for the chakra um, information, but the main keys to chakra healing are chakra balancing, it's called, and opening of the chakras and healing techniques for the chakras. So there's different healing techniques. I'm going to get more into the healing in the second video of this. Um, so we're going to start with the root chakra. So the root chakra um, is sort of between the legs right around um, where you know where you uh, uh, you know your sexual organs and that sort of thing right so but it's not quite there it's more a little bit lower um, so it's sort of at the top of your thighs the very top just before it hits any private areas um, and it's kind of based around there right around the and it's sort of based at the back of your spine right where your tailbone is it's one of the chakras that have both an, a front opening and a back opening. Not all chakras have the back opening. Um, so some people think they are, they're all back and front and they're not. Um, and then they kind of go up your spine from there, but there's front openings for the rest. So the root chakra is one that um, is about our ancestors. And it is also the one that grounds us. It's red. Um, and it's red for a reason. It's the most dense of the seven chakras. So I'm gonna get a little, another little picture here for you. And so I'm showing you the wavelengths of color. So this is the red wavelength, okay? And you can see that as you go up, the wavelengths get busier. So that's why the red or the root chakra, your first chakra, is dense because it's the slowest wavelength. It's the heaviest, it's the densest. And as you go up, it's also the warmest, by the way. So it goes warm, warm, a little bit warm, cooler, cooler. They're actually missing one of the colors here. Um, but this is these are the cooler chakras up here. And I don't mean cooler as in, huh, it's so cool. I mean, like temperature-wise cool. Um, so the root chakra, it's phrase too. So each chakra comes with a phrase and its phrase is I am. So that's why I am statements are so very powerful because they actually um, resonate with those root chakras and you can block them or you can open them depending on what your I am statements are. If you say something like, I am feeling great and I am a, such a great person, then you're helping to um, keep that chakra balanced and open. If you're saying things like, <clears throat> I can't stand myself, I am such a horrible person, then you're starting to shut that chakra down. Um, <clears throat> so the root chakra honors the earth. It's very earth-based. Again, it's what keeps us grounded. Um, it's the slowest of the wavelengths, like I said, but it's also the most stimulating because red is a stimulating color. That's why a lot of restaurants, especially fast food restaurants, not naming any names, but that's the one with the clown, uses red a lot because it stimulates. If they say if you paint your kitchen red, you'll be hungrier and you'll tend to eat more because it stimulates our appetites as well and makes us eat faster. 
but red actually pulls the retina forward and that's why they use it on stop signs and stop lights and caution things because we we will immediately see red that's why it's the brake light color in cars because we see red before we see any other color it always catches our eye um, so red is the color of life force our blood it is the first color we come into contact with when we're born because we're all born in blood kind of thing regardless of how we came out of our mothers whether it's you know we gave birth naturally or whether we were a c-section baby both were immersed in blood and that's what they come out of um, so do you suffer from depression are you feeling angry all the time um, <clears throat> if you ha are feeling angry or very depressed you will tend to have too much um, uh, red in your life, so to speak. So too much is in the root chakra and that needs, that's definitely a blockage and it needs to be um, unblocked and cleansed and balanced because getting that balanced will definitely help with those things. And in fact, you should watch and see if you have a lot of red things in your life. And I'm talking literal red things, like do you wear red t-shirts? Are you wearing red socks? Are you, um, do you have red furniture? You know, that sort of thing. Are your walls painted red? Because if you have a lot of anger and depression, sometimes that color can contribute to that. And actually you should be bringing more blues into your life. So I'm touching on healing a little bit, but I'm gonna touch on it way more in the next video. Um, if you wanna raise, for instance, um, red, the root chakra and red are associated with abundance um, and prosperity and things like that. So if you want to raise um, for your job, wear more red and you're more likely to get it. <laughs> so ways to, so the root chakra is your, is a fire chakra as well. Um, so ways to tell if your root chakra is blocked, um, whether it's over or underactive. So being blocked um, it means that you either have too much red in your life or not enough red in your life. So some of the fears that can come when the chakra is blocked is fear of death because this is our life chakra. So the opposite to that is kind of the fear of death and you're obsessing about death, you're worried about death, that sort of thing. Oh my God, am I dying? You know, if you're, if you're having those thoughts run through your mind, that is a sign that your root chakra needs some work. A lot of us do need our root chakra worked on because it is such a big chakra it's like I said it's the uh, one we are born into and we stay in our root chakra for the first year or two of our lives when we're first born we actually stay in the lower chakras because the lower chakras are very much about survival and the root chakra is definitely about survival and you know babies when they're first born you know they're all about survival they just want a bottle they want to have their pants changed regularly <laughs> and they want to sleep they're just busy growing right so if you're if you're having those fears of death that means you might have too much red in your life or your blocked root chakra if you have a feeling of not belonging to the material world you feel very out of place that sort of thing um, if you have a fear of being weak or being seen as weak, then that can be an indication that your root chakra needs some work. Um, if you have a fear or a lack mentality, a lot of people, um, when they're, you know, fearful of money or fearful of being overwhelmed by bills or, and it's a constant kind of fear, it's often your root chakra that needs that work, um, that um, f feeling of lack. Um, I know I really had to work very hard on my feeling of lack and knowing that money is energy and it flows in and it flows out and I want it flowing in more than out. And I had a lot of fear and emotion wrapped around money, but I also had, it kept coming up for years and years that it's your root chakra, your root chakra needs work. Outside of just um, money issues, it was also like if you have parent issues, Often it's your root, it, that affects your root chakra because your parents are your first primary um, caregivers and your first primary relationships, especially with your mother. So if you have any issues that way, your root chakra often needs to be worked on as well. Um, if you're feeling exhausted all the time, um, if you feel like there's too much pressure every day, you're like you're feeling this sort of pressure to do things or like, oh my God, you know, like, 
you know, your boss tells you to do this and you feel like there's so much pressure now on you. If you're always going through that feeling of having pressure on you or there's expectations or, or whatnot that you feel are too heavy, then that might be a root chakra um, indicator for work kind of thing. If you feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders, even though the root chakra is the lowest one and based way down here, you can feel like the weight of the shoulder weight of the world is on your shoulders then sometimes that's a root chakra thing and you'll find the chakras tend to mirror each other a little bit too so it's going to kind of get interesting as we go further up in these chakras if you're feeling spacey you know you're kind of out there and you're kind of like not connected that means you're not well grounded um, and that means you need more red in your life and you need to get grounded because that's a root chakra thing. If you're feeling unsafe or paranoid, that's also a sign of root chakra work needing. Um, if you have colon, like it can manifest physically as well. Because remember I said it, um, they're energy centers and they affect the mental, the spiritual, um, the emotional and the physical. Now, if they're affecting on the physical level, that often means it's in a big stage of needing work because the physical level is sort of the last level it goes to. It kind of starts with the spiritual, it goes to the um, mental, and then it, 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 it increases to the emotional. The mental and emotional kind of go together and then suddenly you're physically manifesting it. So if you're physically manifesting it, that means the chakras needed to work for a long time. So if you find you get constipation all the time, or you have any kind of colon issues, lower back pain can be an indicator of your root chakra needing work. Varicose veins are a sign of your root chakra needing work. Um, either being overweight or underweight is sometimes a root chakra. I mean, I'm not saying it's uh, a hard and fast rule. I'm just saying these are indicators. And along with a good healthcare program, look at your chakras and see what maybe you can do. So like I said, we're, we're talking blockages today and what the root chakra is all about. And then we're gonna get into the healing in the next video. Um, inflammation, if you have a lot of inflammation, arthritis, um, you know, that sort of thing, then joint pain, aches and pains all the time, that can be a root chakra thing. Leg cramps definitely is a root chakra thing. Um, depression, like I mentioned earlier, if you have poor focus, you can't seem to concentrate, you're feeling disorganized, um, you're feeling pessimistic, um, anger or rage, sort of out of control anger and rage can be an indicator of root chakra needing to be worked on. If you're frustrated easily, if you have anxiety, I have a lot of clients I've worked with on anxiety and a lot of times there's root chakra work that needs to be done. Um, and once you work on these chakras, you'll find that things go a little bit smoother and then you're able to overcome some of the difficulties that come because of the blockages of these chakras. Um, poor boundaries is another one. So it's kind of an opposite thing. So you either have poor boundaries or you have no personal space, you're, you're not following social cues, you're not picking up on them, or the opposite is you're too rigid, you're too... Um, willing to, unwilling to expand your point of view. It's kind of your way or the highway, that sort of thing. Being stubborn is another one that your root chakra might need some work on. And hoarding is another root chakra thing because the root chakra is very much um, all about your uh, finances and also your um, resources. So if you're having this fear of not having enough resources, and that's often where hoarding comes from is a fear of not having enough, then that means that you need that root chakra kind of looked at. So some of the gifts, so these are blockages, I just wanted to point out the block, blockages, but some of the gifts, so what does the root chakra, like why do I care if it's blocked, like no I don't want to be a hoarder, but what's the benefit of having an unblocked root chakra. So the benefit of having an unblocked root chakra is that it is a connection to our ancestors. So you feel more connected. You're um, feeling that I have my family and my ancestors here with me, um, backing me up, even if they've passed on kind of thing. So you get that gift. The other gift is you, um, you're able to now love in the truest and deepest sense. Um, 
So you, you kind of open up yourself. I know a lot of people will be going to the heart, but really if, if your heart's open but your root chakra isn't, you're gonna find that you're not gonna have a lot of long-term relationships. So opening your root chakra and balancing it and healing it, because a lot of trauma gets held in the root chakra, especially ancestral trauma. Um, so when you start working on that root chakra to heal it and open it and balance it, not only are you doing it for yourself, but you're actually doing it for generations to come. So your children and your children's children will now not feel that trauma that maybe happened to your people, your family, your ethnic background, whatever it might be, um, as strongly. And therefore you're able to, like I said, love in that truest and deepest form. You'll find when your root chakra is balanced, you have way more passion, not only in the bedroom, <laughs> but also passion for life, you know, passion for creating things. You, you find everything is so much better somehow because you have that passion that's driving you, which is a form of love, right? Um, you'll find that you're able to commit to things better you're more solid somehow. So your commitment, um, you don't overcommit, but you, you're true to your commitments. Um, you'll find that you have a lot of trust, that you're able to um, trust people easier, and you'll know who to trust. Your, your gauge for who to trust will improve um, greatly. You'll find that you have a lot of courage and strength and daring. You'll be willing to take those first steps. You'll be less likely to be, oh, I don't know, and you know, you're not, you waffle, or you're not sure how to make that decision or how to make that first step. It's scary. It doesn't mean the first step isn't scary, even though it, your root chakra might be balanced, but it does give you that strength and courage to just, yeah, okay, let's do this kind of thing, right? Um, it gives you determination, greater determination and greater grit. So you'll find that life gets way better because you do have that grit um, and things don't get you down in the same way. They don't immobilize you completely into a full breakdown kind of thing. Even the hard stuff, you'll find that you have that strength and that grit to go, okay, life has dealt me this, this too shall pass kind of thing, right? Um, you'll find that you have great concentration. You're able to focus on things. You're thinking way clearer. Um, you're achieving your goals. You've got a drive behind you that you didn't have before. Your drive totally improves when you're working with your root chakra and healing it. Um, you'll find that you're um, able to relax and be still. Um, people who can't meditate often need a lot of root chakra work. Um, because everybody can meditate, but your root chakra needs to be balanced in order to do it. Um, so if you find you can't meditate, that's another indicator that your root chakra is blocked. Um, because if it's not, you are able to be still and you are able to meditate and you're able to go into deep meditation um, and, and that sort of thing and do deep emotional mental work with yourself. Um, you'll find that when your root chakra is balanced that you have better physical health overall because the root chakra is all about the physical. Again, like I said, we're born into the root chakra. We live there for a couple of years as babies because it's all about survival and about good health and growing and that's what babies do. They just grow. That's what they do. <laughs> um, there, it, You'll find that you have a healthy weight whatever that might be for your body type and, and whatnot um, that with your uh, uh, healed root chakra, weight often isn't an issue so much anymore. Now, losing weight or gaining weight is always a journey, so don't think, well, you know, I'm not a good physical weight, but I've lost some weight. You know, the journey continues, right? And as it continues, so your root chakra also heals. But oftentimes, people find that when they work on that root chakra and they truly get the healing, that the physical starts to present itself naturally. For instance, I, like I said, I had to do a lot of work on my root chakra. Um, I was raped at the age of 16. And so I also had to work on the next chakra, which is the sacral chakra. And we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But I had to really work on healing those 
chakras and I found when I did the mental and spiritual and emotional work of healing, because I battled my weight for a long, long time, that now the weight is slowly coming off. And it's because I've worked on the mental and spiritual and emotional, the physical is starting now. It was always a battle and it's not as much anymore, which is nice. Although I know it's a journey, so it's gonna be a long journey and that's okay. I'm okay with that. Um, you'll find also too with your root chakra is balanced, that um, you have more energy, more vitality, you have you tend to have healthier blood, tissue, and organs because that's the physical side of the root chakra that it uh, helps to cover. Each chakra is kind of in charge of certain things and the blood, tissue, and organs are kind of what the root chakra is all about. So now we're moving up to the next one, like I mentioned, and it's called the sacral chakra. So its statement is, I feel. Um, and the sacral chakra is um, the second chakra and it is the orange chakra. So we went to the root, we're going up to the sacral. So it's orange. And what it is, is it's a blending of the red color and the yellow color of the uh, chakra above it to balance it out to make the perfect orange. So it's connected to the other two chakras as well. So like I said, it's orange. It is actually a water chakra um, and it covers all your sexual organs, like your uterus if you're a woman, your ovaries, that sort of thing. Um, it also covers, um, you know, like obviously the men's um, sexual organs. Um, it's the color of vitality and strength. It covers the pelvic area, the complete pelvic area. And this is where our bliss is. Um, and this is where our creative center is because obviously when you have sex, and you create another life together, that is the ultimate creation, uh, act of creation. So that's why it is your creative center as well for everything, whether it's a book, a painting, a song, a child, whatever it might be, it's, a, it's your creative uh, chakra. So the Buddhists call this um, the Hera. So that's H-A-R-A, -A, Hera, which is the center of being where we connect to the deepest voice of self, the deepest place of stillness and wisdom. It's also the place of sensuality because it is the sexual um, chakra. It's not just the sexual, but it does cover that whole area. It is the development. Um, oh yes, and then when we're, when like I said, when we're little, we were born into the root chakra and we live in the bottom three for quite a while. And when we're able to walk, that's when we're moving into the sacral chakra, the second chakra. So we move up into the sacral chakra and now we're living in both those chakras. So it's about balance and strength and sustenance. So that's what it takes to walk is balance and strength and sustenance. So that's why when we learn to walk, now we've moved into that sacral chakra and are living there as well. So some of the troubles of the sacral chakra, and then we'll get into the gifts, are fear of sexual aggression, um, fear of rape, that sort of thing. If you've been raped, often it can create a block because of course now you have all that fear surrounding that whole area. Um, fear of showing the real you, um, fear of being ridiculed, um, fear of being too sensitive as well if, with your emotions. So you tend to suppress your emotions because you don't want to fear the, show them, I mean, because you're f fearful of someone making fun of the way you feel or whatever. Um, it's really hard for you to do nothing. So people that are busy all the time and, you know, oh, I can't sit still. I got to be busy all the time. I got to be doing stuff. Or if they're just always busy, um, that's usually a sacral chakra thing that you need to work on. Um, and it takes a long time for busy people to relax. If it takes you a long time to kind of settle down, especially at night, all my head keeps spinning, blah, 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 blah. I can't go to sleep. It takes me forever to go to sleep, you know, that sort of thing. If you find that, then sacral chakra work is probably what you're going to be needing. It's probably a blockage of some kind. If you have painful periods, 
That is another sign of a blocked chakra or blocked sacral chakra. Um, fertility issues, low sex drive can also create blocks in this chakra. If you're finding you're having full on uh, creative blocks like writer's block or whatever, um, then the sacral chakra is the one that you should be visiting or paying attention to. Hip pain, um, that's the physical aspect of the sacral chakra. Um, if you're having hip pain, if you find you're having a lot of mood swings and you're emotionally unbalanced, and it's not a fear of, I don't want to show someone I'm sad, but you find that you're like out of the gate, you know, you turn on a dime as far as moods go. If you're having those mood swings, if you actually have physical stiffness, um, that's often a sacral chakra thing. Um, if you're overly demanding of attention, if you're obsessive, if you're acting in a disassociative way, um, if you find you've got sort of dead and senses and you're not like, yeah, okay, you know, you're kind of emo-like, then that might be a sacral chakra because, of course, a lot of our passion comes from the sacral chakra as well as our root chakra, but um, from our sacral chakra as well. It is, you know, the, it's like the red one. It's a slower one as far as wavelength goes. It's not as hot as the root chakra, but it's definitely a warm chakra. The Buddhists call, um, uh, oh, I already said that, so the Hera. Um, enjoyment and delight. So some of the gifts that we have from this chakra, you get enjoyment and delight in all of life's pleasure, pleasures. Like just everything just seems great, you know, like apples taste great, you know, walking feels great. It's like, I'm really enjoying this book. I'm enjoying my time with my family, um, that sort of thing. Just everything seems to have like a beautiful taste, a beautiful smell, a beautiful feel, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, when you have a balanced sacral chakra, you find you have healthy appetites for food, sex, and pleasure, and healthy. So that means you enjoy food, but you're not overindulging. You enjoy sex, but you're not overindulging. You look for pleasure, and you like pleasure in your life, but you're not bringing too much of anything into it, right? Um, again, also too, with your sacral chakra, when it's balanced, you have lots of energy. So sacral and, and root are very close in that way. They do tend to provide the energy, the boost that we need. Um, the sacral chakra, if it's balanced, you also have a healthy curiosity. You're open to things. You're a little more open-minded. You have a lot more joy in your life. Um, you have healthy boundaries. Um, because it's in our sacral chakra, once we start to walk, like I said, when we're little, we live in those bottom chakras. So when you start to walk, the next stage is you also start to separate from mother and father, Me not meaning that you're off ready to go to college or anything <laughs> at the age of two and walking or whatever, but you, you realize mom and dad are two separate beings from yourself. Up until that point, you kind of saw yourself as one of them. You know, it's like you couldn't separate the two of them. Um, or yourself from them. So you realize, oh, I am my own person. Not that you're going around and saying that, but you start to get that concept that um, you are a separate person from your mother and father. Um, if you have a balanced sacral chakra, you have great optimism, you're vibrant, you're enthusiastic, you're tender and nurturing, um, you're dedicated, you have a wisdom, you're imaginative and you're creative. So those are all good things to have and that's what you get when you unblock the sacral chakra um, or the second chakra or the orange chakra. <laughs> so now we're gonna move up into the yellow chakra, which is called our solar plexus. So the sacral chakra is actually positioned just below our belly button and the solar plexus chakra, which is covers our stomach and whatnot, is just above our belly button. So it's the third chakra, it's our yellow chakra. So it's a yellow colored, nice bright one. It's uh, you know a ray of light kind of thing. It's where the eye shines from. So the solar plexus statement is actually I do because it is the one that sort of brings us to that point of energy to move forward. This is where you find your strength, your will, and your grit. I know I mentioned grit in the root chakra, but it's a grit of um, being able to, you know, be solid in very difficult situations. So you're not calling on that grit all the time. 
um, you're calling on your strength and your will and your grit for small things. Like I get out of bed every morning because that's the thing I do. And I, you know, the strength and will to clean the toilet or do the laundry or whatever. <laughs> Sometimes these things are very um, insurmountable, <laughs> it feels like. It's where your personal power comes from. So this is your power center. Um, it's all about optimism, wisdom, knowledge. This is where this sits. Um, intuition and your gut instinct are here. Um, they're also up in your third eye, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, it covers physically your stomach, your digestive organs, liver, pancreas, and the middle part of your back. Um, people who have good balance of yellow stand tall and tend to radiate, um, and they radiate power. When you are slouching, you are letting energy leak from your solar plexus. So watch the way you kind of sit and stuff. I tend to be a sloucher, so I'm always co constantly correcting myself. Um, so watch yourself when you're driving, are you slouching? Are you slouching at the desk? Are you slouching while you're, you know, watching TV, that sort of thing. Watch when you're slouching and correct it. And you'll find when you correct it, your solar plexus, it, it helps to bring it back into balance. Um, yellow is for the development stage when we're little. So we've moved on to the sacral chakra and walked. We've realized mom and dad are separate beings from ourselves. So when we go into the yellow chakra that we live in, that's when we begin to use language and we start talking and having a command of the language. So it's, it's not like the first day you start talking, you're now living in your yellow chakra and you're ready to move on. It's a whole stage. So it's the development of that because, you know, when you first start talking, you're talking one word at a time, maybe some guttural sounds, <laughs> then you get into phrases, then you get into sentences. And then as you grow, you know, when you're first off to school, you're starting to be able to communicate with other people. Um, you're able to story tell a little bit. And that's why storytelling is so very important, both in reading to children and um, allowing them to have their stories as well. It, the sacral chakra, right above our belly button, is also about playfulness and healthy self-esteem. Um, it's an expansive color. Um, so, you know, that's why it covers the stomach because stomachs can be expanded sometimes. Um, <laughs> it's bright energy and it's all about confidence. This is where our confidence comes from. Um, it's choosing healthy, or unhealthy relationships when it comes to emotional stuff. You know, if you're choosing unhealthy relationships time and again, like, you know, you've got the boyfriend who's constant, like I always pick the guys that are, um, you know, cheating on me, or I always pick the guys that are crazy or whatever. If you're picking unhealthy relationships all the time, you might want to visit healing your, sac uh, your solar plexus because that's where sort of relationship choices come from. Um, the solar plexus is also a fire chakra. So we've got fire, water, fire in our first three chakras, right? Um, so some of the troubles that can come with a blocked solar plexus. So see if this applies to you or sounds like you. Feeling like your personal space is being violated all the time. It, it may be a perception thing as opposed to an actual thing. Um, intolerant to aggressive people. Um, feeling like you have to be aggressive yourself to get ahead. If you feel like, you know, I can't just work hard or I can't just, you know, use my talents or knowledge or whatever, I have to be aggressive with them. Um, that might be a sacral chakra thing. Um, cause being overly aggressive is actually a form of self-defense, um, often a perceived version of self-defense. Um, so also being emotionally dependent, having codependent relationships, that's your sacral chakra that needs work. Um, if you're over controlling or micromanaging things, both in your life, perhaps in other people's lives, that's a sign of the sacral chakra being out of control and out of balance. If you're a bit of a drama queen, that's your sacral chakra being blocked. Um, if you find it hard to make decisions, um, if you're comparing all the time, comparing yourself to others, that sort of thing. Um, if you don't trust yourself, if you find it hard, like you, maybe you hear a little voice of some kind or your gut instinct says, go with this, and you go, I don't know. If you question it like that, like right away, often that means you're not listening to your 
intuition and you're not listening to your gut instinct. So your gut instinct tends to be right here where your gut is obviously, and it tends to be a survival thing. Your intuition tends to come from your third eye, but some of your intuition is here as well. So the gut instinct is more um, the survival because again, it's one of the lower chakras and the lower chakras tend to be more the survival things, the things that keep you safe in very dangerous situations. Um, so if you're not trusting yourself, you know, you think this guy's going to hurt you, but maybe I'll get into the elevator alone with him, you know, then, you know, that's a sacral chakra thing. If you have low self-esteem, um, if you lack willpower or you're a procrastinator, that's also a sign of a blocked sacral chakra. If you worry a lot, that's the sign of a sacral chakra blockage. If you have poor digestion, because it can then manifest physically, if you're having digestive issues or tummy issues, um, then or bloating, gas, that sort of thing, then that tends to, constipation tends to be the root chakra, but the root chakra is influencing the um, sacral chakra, and uh, this solar plexus, I mean, and the solar plexus can affect the root chakra. Like I said, it's like a river too. You know, if one's blocked, it starts to, affect the other ones because they're not getting the flow of energy like they're supposed to. Um, uh, if you're diabetic, hypoglycemic, if you have high or low blood sugars, if you're kind of suffering from that, that's a physical sort of manifestation of a perhaps block sacral chakra. So that's something to look at. Um, like I said, gas, bloating, liver issues, stomach ulcers, um, eating disorders, IBS, that sort of thing. Chronic fatigue is often associated with your sacral chakra. Now, healing your sacral chakra, it doesn't mean that it's going to take away the IBS or the chronic fatigue or whatever, but it will definitely help alleviate it a lot. Um, hypertension, uh, fibromyalgia is another um, thing where you need to look at your sacral chakra. Um, being cynical or sarcastic a lot. That's often a sacral chakra thing. Um, if you have confusion or sort of mental fog, um, that can be a sacral chakra blockage. If you're feeling competitive, um, if you're overly competitive, I mean, there's healthy com competition and then there's unhealthy. If everything becomes a competition, that's not so healthy. Um, also to blaming others where you're not owning your own mistakes. Um, if you have the need to be right all the time, or the need to have a, the last word that is very much a sign that your sacral chakra, I mean that your solar plexus chakra could be blocked and needs some work. If you're a little bit self-centered, if you tend to be manipulative, if you're prone to temper tantrums, even as an adult, because adults can get stuck in these um, chakras as well. When, when a two-year-old is living in the chakra, which is totally fine and normal, they do tend to have temper tantrums and that's because they're living in the sacral chakra or their solar plexus where they're supposed to be. So that's why they don't always have the sophistication and the emotional maturity to know how to handle some of these emotions because these are your survival chakras down here. These are more the um, mental and enlightened kind of chakras where you do gain that emotional, spiritual, mental maturity. Um, but two-year-olds are not expected to be up here yet. <laughs> um, if you have great feelings of shame for no real reason, right? Um, if you have feelings of unworthiness, again, for no real reason. If you're unable to accept or learn spiritual lessons, if you're always getting the same lesson, like, Oh my God, why does this keep happening to me? If that phrase is falling out of your mouth because something is constantly frustrating you and you see, you feel like you're banging your head against a wall, um, a series of bad luck events, you know, there, bad luck events very often are challenges that are supposed to be spiritual lessons for us. So when we get stuck in these lower chakras, we don't learn the spiritual lessons we're supposed to learn. So part of the healing is being able to move beyond these chakras and up into these chakras. Um, and that's when you can start to learn those spiritual lessons that we all have to learn. So it's not like, um, oh, if you move past these, you don't get the spiritual lessons. Yeah, you do. You still get the spiritual lessons, but you don't get the series of bad luck events. You don't feel like you're knocking your head against a wall. Um, 
you start to realize, oh, this is a gift too, and this is the lesson that I'm going to be learning from this gift. So some of the gifts of your solar plexus, when it is healed and unblocked and flowing properly, um, is you're very intelligent. Your intellect goes up when um, you have the unblockedness and the healing. You have mental courage, meaning you're, you're able to think deeply, think expansively, you're open-minded, and it doesn't scare you. Other people's opinions you can listen to without f the fear of, well, I don't agree with you. And, you know, like you can still disagree and you don't have to take on everyone's opinion. If you're taking on everyone's opinion and you find you're waffling or you're, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, 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 then that might be a sacral chakra thing that you need to look at. Um, the ability to process knowledge quickly and retain it. You retain knowledge much quicker when your sacral chakra is unblocked. You tend to have better common sense. <laughs> you tend to be more responsible and more reliable. You're less flaky and flighty. Um, and that's a sacral chakra thing. If you heal that up, or I mean that sacral chakra, I keep wanting to say that, your solar plexus. If your solar plexus is open and balanced, you have common sense, you're reliable, and you're responsible. You tend to have a very warm personality um, when your sacral, or when your solar plexus chakra is open. It is the solar plexus, so it is nice and warm and cheery. Um, you have a great sense of humor. Your humor tends to be better when your uh, solar plexus is balanced. You're more playful, and you have a healthy ego. So you're confident, but you're not conceited. Um, you have a nice balance of the ego. Because the ego's not a bad thing. It's just when the ego's out of control that it can become a negative thing. Um, you have a healthy self-esteem, for instance. You also have deep personal power, and you have expansive self-knowledge. You're very aware of yourself, which is a very good thing. And that's, you know, that's part of the growth when we're children, when we're still living in these lower chakras, um, is becoming self-aware. So now you realize you're separated from mommy and daddy, and then you go to school and you realize there's other little people like yourself, there's adults that have, you know, authority over you, um, there's adults that teach you, that help you, and there's other people, there's other families out there, because, you know, you start going on play dates and things like that, and noticing these things, right? Um, when you have a healthy and unblocked solar plexus, you tend to be fearless, not reckless, fearless. There's a difference. Um, you can learn the spiritual lessons well, and thus life is smoother for you. So I'm going to stop there for right now, and we're going to move on to the heart chakra, but I'm going to reveal something here to you. So once we get here, this is where our solar plexus is, there's a little gateway here, and we need to pass through that gateway to get into the green chakra there, which is our heart chakra which is the next chakra we're going to talk about in the next video and what some of the gifts, what some of the blockages are. But those are the first three chakras. Those are our survival chakras. Those are the lower chakras. That's where we live when we're little. Sometimes as adults, we can still get stuck down there. And we need to recognize that we need to cross over that gateway into the higher chakras. And the higher chakras are not better chakras. They're just mature chakras. So I'll leave you with that and I'll be back with the next chakra, which is the heart one. Bye.